And now is the moment of truth where over the last, uh, well, One two year. days, we have um, warmed up, <laughs> all of us and the rest of the world, to uh, actually uh, introduce <laughs> officially <laughs> the <laughs> Wow Dao, which we have been working on conceptually for a very long time. So um, hello, everyone. As we are closing this amazing insight day two, um, hold on one second. So as we are closing the, we are, uh, sorry, we are amazing insight day two, AI and Web Summit 2023. We are proud to officially open the door for the AI developers to join the WOW DAO. So let me explain. In the next 15 to 20 minutes, you will learn about the vision, the benefits, and how to build the ecosystem with IP NFT protection, how to get engaged with working groups. We will disclose details about the product roadmap. And most importantly, we explain how to integrate a decentralized governance. And we have all learned that that's one of the key things to actually pull this off in the first place. So what, what do we as a membership organization aim for? Well, we aim to decentralize the AI democratization of it and enable developers to control their own destiny. Can we stop for one second? I have a question. Do we have a slide? Are we showing the slides here, by the way? I don't sure. see any slides. Yvonne. Yvonne, can somebody confirm? Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And if we go to probably slide number one, maybe even slide number two. Um, okay, here we go. So uh, let me go. What, what is the Wow Dao? Okay, here we go. So the Wow Dao, uh, can we go to the next slide for a second? I want to check something. Okay, here we go. Now we are on track. Thank you very much and sorry for the hiccup. So what is the Wow Dao? The Wow Dao is the first decentralized autonomous organization for the global AI community, a blockchain based cooperative ecosystem that supports the entire process of AI inventions from innovation to funding to commercialization. Anyone can easily innovate, protect intellectual property and share their AI in inventions in a secure and transparent manner. The mission is to solve existing core limitations for developers to maximize their return on investments. Examples are the dominance of a few global hyperscalers. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Inefficient commercialization, the absence of equitable rewards, and the need to serve multiple development platforms. Next slide, please. The value proposition. The WowDAO's value proposition is to provide a comprehensive ecosystem controlled and owned by its contributing members, a supporting team of AI thought leaders, corporate executives, investors, a merit-based ownership governance, IP safeguards to protect and commercialize AI inventions and ultimately decentralized AI development by bringing it on chain. Um, this brings us to the topic of the benefits. I think that's the next slides, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yes, uh, yes, is it? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So this brings us to the topic of the benefits of contributing to contribution WOW DAO members who are token holders. Everything we intend to do is manifested in a fair, in a strong, and in a visible established governance. Token holders are rewarded based on their contributions. They receive profit sharing from the joint pool have access to AI tools and IP pools as well, and to grow their business, to get early access to potential investors who are hopefully viable part of the ecosystem. So please join us all in this exciting and rewarding journey. And with that, I would like to introduce Chris, one of the founding members to explain a little bit more about the additional values that we have to offer. Chris, over to you. Thanks so much, Thomas. And next slide, please. 
So as, as Thomas mentioned, WowDAO is building an ecosystem. Uh, we're, we're building a cooperative, something where all of our users, all of the participants own a part of what we're building together. At the core of this is tokenized intellectual property. Our core design around this is inspired by protocols that have been developed by Molecule, where I'm also an IP legal advisor. Molecule is a tech company in the Web3 space that has been largely leading the development of bio DAOs and the really emergence of what's called the decentralized science movement. Now, the question immediately arises, how does one make a WoW DAO IP MFT and what exactly are these things? Well, it's remarkably simple. Simply draft a description of your AI project and the intellectual property rights that you wish to license into WoW DAO. This can really take any form that you may want it to, although we intend to be developing templates so that it becomes easy, transparent, and sort of scalable as we all look at um, the inputs into the IP NFTs that we'll be using inside WowDAO. What's so important about this is that you can retain all legal title to your intellectual property, and you have full control over the terms upon which you want to license your IP into the DAO. You then mint your project description and these IP rights into what we call an WowDAO IP NFT. What that really is, is simply an attachment of a PDF of your project description and the IP license rights into a non-fungible token and what this does is this also legally assigns the IP rights that are being licensed into the token itself, such that whoever is the token holder is now the owner or controller of those rights that are sort of enumerated within. Now, with your IP NFT, you can do something truly revolutionary. You tokenize your IP NFT into fungible cooperative IP tokens. These are unique to your unique IP NFT. And what these cooperative IP tokens can be used for is they can be sold, auctioned, or otherwise distributed in whatever way you see fit to people, investors, or other collaborators that you want to help co-govern the development of your AI project and of really the IP in your IP NFT. So why is this so revolutionary? Well, tokenized IP and distributed governance over IP development present the first time in history. I mean, truly the first time in history, in the history of the intellectual property economy, that investors and collaborators, IP producers and builders can actually have liquidity and pricing mechanisms for early stage IP. With this, we can align market incentives to provide graduated funding and rapid scaling for successful projects. The demand for cooperative IP tokens increases in accordance with ongoing IP validation. And we use these economics to really further design the economic engine and the alignment of economic incentives that we're building through the WowDAO cooperative. Next slide, please. And as you heard on our panels earlier today, and as Thomas rightly mentioned, um, you know, the, there's a significant amount of regulatory uncertainty that DAOs face when really, you know, going through this noble process of democratizing AI through blockchain-based tokens. And what we're doing with WowDAO is, is moving cautiously. Uh, we, we have no intentions of trying to build something that creates a token system that's amenable to pump and dumps or anything like that. We're much, frankly, more serious. We're people who really want to build. And so we want to build a cooperative that really ensures that we stay out of legal trouble with any regulators, but that also allows us to move ahead with what makes sense and what in with what works. And so we as as uh, our our sort of choice in doing so is to employ this legal theory 
that Yev, um, who you heard on the panel earlier at Launch Legal, pioneered, and that James at Auric um, has really helped to advance. And across top law firms and KPMG and um, other sort of big players, this model has been well validated in using a cooperative as a legal structure to organize this type of digital network co-owned by its participants. And so what we're on the path towards doing is organizing WowDAO as a cooperative in Colorado, in the United States, under the Colorado Uniform Limited Cooperative, Cooperative Association Act. A mouthful, but the nice thing about this is it's a, a template cooperative law that's common across at least 10 other jurisdictions. So we're building something that is also scalable and transferable and portable, not only across jurisdictions in the US, but should people ever want to organize a cooperative in Switzerland or in other places, the principles that we're designing our cooperative with are, are relatively consistent. Now, <laughs> excuse me, membership in the cooperative will be distributed through a cooperative membership token. This token is largely non-transferable and provides each token holder a single vote in cooperative governance, a one person, one vote kind of token. And this obligates the token holder to accept a legally binding duty of care over the cooperative and its rules. In a decentralized cooperative where we may really not know each other well to, to have the trust um, that one may, may want, well, we rely upon our legally binding commitments to care. And this actually has some interesting legal innovation around it itself that emerges out of common law systems, things I won't get into now, but if anyone's interested down the road, there, there's plenty of resources we're drafting around this. And through the cooperative, we plan to launch freely transferable WOW tokens. These are utility tokens that the cooperative members can use to delegate governance authority and to exchange other value across the ecosystem. And while the cooperative membership token and WOW token work together to administer governance across the cooperative, we have, as I mentioned on the previous slide, IP NFTs and cooperative IP tokens in another kind of parallel system working together to administer governance of the IP created by WowDAO members um, and cooperative IP tokens and decentralizing that governance. Now together, these four tokens are designed to optimize a decentralized cooperative ecosystem where members retain ownership and control over their own IP while also co-governing a pool of shared resources and even shared IP um, at the cooperative level. Next slide, please. And so what's really cool about this? Well, for those of us who've been in Web3 for a while, we know again, <laughs> decentralized governance, even when you get it right, it seems to have a short shelf life. Um, new people come into the DAO. So many people across Web3 today are active in multiple DAOs. And there's a natural instinct among those working across multiple DAOs to want to find ways to make DAOs interoperable. When we can make DAOs interoperable, they can scale more readily. It becomes oftentimes win-win situations. Um, and we really help to build a, an ever-growing ecosystem of nested decentralized sort of specializations. Um, and so while we are setting ourselves up really to help launch using this four token ecosystem, we've also designed our cooperative membership token to be compatible for use in tandem with any token. This is the first type of design, um, the, or this type of design is the first that I've at least had experience with. And, and it's something that um, I've sort of been working on really incorporating lessons learned from a lot of the DAO governance issues that I've seen across the decentralized science space. How does this work? Well, any holder of a WOW DAO cooperative membership token can propose at any time to integrate another token into the ecosystem. 
Of course, in order to remain compliant with cooperative rules and regulations, the use of any other token inside the DAO must continue to comport with the rules of the cooperative, which are limiting in some ways, but the power of this interoperability cannot be overstated. For example, the four of us, Ha, Thomas, Prasanna, and I, have been in discussions with multiple other DAOs across the decentralized science movement to explore means for collaboration. One of my favorite ecosystem DAOs is DSI World. DSI World, for those who aren't familiar with them, is designed to be a kind of one-stop shop for users to view, engage with, and understand all that is happening in the world of decentralized science. Now in due course, WowDAO might decide that we want to become interoperable with the DSI World DAO. So how would this happen? Well, with the WowDAO cooperative membership token primitive, any WowDAO member can propose to integrate the DSI token, the token used in the DSI World DAO into WowDAO. What this really looks like is a proposal to use DSI to govern perhaps certain aspects of WowDAO, or perhaps a certain portion of a treasury that WowDAO Cooperative thinks is worth co-governing with DSI token holders in order to optimize um, some benefit to WowDAO that arises from integrating with DSI World. And what's so powerful about this is that these means of integrating other tokens can be done entirely on WowDAO's own rules. It's really up to the cooperative itself to decide how and for what purposes any other token is to be used with the cooperative membership token. When in doing so, and really in any time this happens, both DAOs stand to win. Now, WowDAO would increase in this type of integration, WowDAO would increase the demand for cooperative membership tokens among DSI World DAO members so that they could unlock their ability to use DSI holdings inside WowDAO. And this at the same time increases the demand and utility of DSI itself with strengthens DSI World. These types of collaborations are things that we want to embrace in WowDAO and to really help us scale and to sort of allow the market for innovative solutions and efficient governance be sort of uh, upgradable inside our system. Next slide, please. And here's sort of a quick visual to capture how this token system works. Um, you know, think of the WowDAO cooperative and of course then the corresponding cooperative membership token as the gravitational center of WowDAO. Around this gravitational center, we can put any number of additional tokens into orbit. For example, what we're already planning to put in, the WOW token. This functions, as I mentioned, as a utility token for the cooperative. We have WowDAO IP NFTs, which function as a means for the WowDAO cooperative to interact with WowDAO members IP. And then we have the cooperative IP tokens, which function as a means for WowDAO members to invest in and co-govern specific projects and IP of interest from their WowDAO colleagues. And now any other token with any other utility can of course be brought into orbit. Um, and this again is done subject to a proposal and approval by the other WowDAO cooperative members. The key here really is that each of these tokens must be used in tandem with the WowDAO cooperative membership token for it to actually be a token inside the cooperative ecosystem. Next slide, please. And so now let me flip the perspective a little bit around on how this decentralized governance works for me, the builder, the IP producer, the one who has a project wants to come into the DAO and is asking, how does this work for me? What control do I have? Where might I lose it? How do I stand to benefit? And how can I really participate? And this gets really, really exciting to me. Um, our design here follows the Nobel Prize winning work of Eleanor Ostrom. Eleanor Ostrom won the Nobel Prize in 2009 for her lifelong work um, which ultimately led to setting forth 
eight principles on how to design a sustainable governance system for large scale common pool resources. For example, pooled IP or shared resources inside WowDAO. One of these key principles is nested governance, which requires clearly delineated boundaries of governance authority and meaningful control of governance from the individual up through the interconnected whole. As a builder bringing an AI project to WowDAO, you get to keep legal title to your IP and completely control the terms and conditions of the IP that you wish to, wish to license into the DAO. You can then take your first step in decentralizing governance over your IP by tokenizing and distributing cooperative IP tokens from your IP NFT. Now next, as a member of the WowDAO Cooperative, you can co-govern the acquisition and administration of pooled resources including pooled other IP that might help you develop your own IP that you may want more generally to help your project and the projects of your colleagues to grow. And now lastly, you can use WOW to delegate governance authority in the cooperative, enabling, enabling trusted specialists to efficiently represent and manage your interests, again, in, in increasing concentric circles of decentralization. The key in all of this is that for builders, intellectual property is your most valuable asset. The WowDAO design that we've made recognizes this and keeps you in the driver's seat. Next slide, please. And here, you know, when you have an opportunity to design an ecosystem that's built on Nobel Prize winning work, it's worth taking an extra minute to just pause and quickly highlight how we, we do satisfy these eight principles. And I think it really helps make it click what we're trying to do here. I think this is also going to be something that's exciting for people in Web3 more generally who have heard of Ostrom compliant projects, but I think WowDAO really seems poised to be one of the first to implement. And these eight principles set forth one, as I mentioned before, define clear group boundaries. Well, this comes naturally when you have nested layers of token governance. Groups are defined by those who hold tokens. These are bright line rules. Two, empower individuals to control the rules over their own resources. And this is exactly what we do at our IP NFT level. We allow individuals, IP producers, to retain ownership and control over their IP and the IP license. Three, Ensure that those impacted by the rules can participate in modifying the rules. Well, that's exactly what we achieve with our cooperative IP tokens, which enable us to co-govern an IP cooperative. Now four, make sure member rights are respected by outside authorities. One of the beauties of organizing a DAO around intellectual property and doing so as a legally registered cooperative is that these are all legally recognized assets that operate together under legally binding contracts. Should there be disputes, the initial step will be to resolve disputes inside the DAO, but should that fail, we have the, the recourse that already exists in the IP justice system or in private contract law to address any issues. Five, Make sure member rights are respected by outside of, oh, I'm sorry, I think I, I doubled up on that one. Oh, we actually have a few doubled here. I'm gonna skip through these uh, in a second, apologies. Um, seven though, provide cheap and efficient means for dispute resolution. Here, we use tokenized intellectual property to outperform existing inefficiencies in the IP economy. For those who have had a lot of experience trying to license intellectual property in the existing IP economy, or you've ever had to deal with a patent troll, or you've ever had to litigate against a patent, and you find that 50% of patents litigated through to the merits are found invalid. You, generally, there's consensus among all of us in this market that there are a lot of market failures, and there are a lot of ways that the system can be improved. Simply bringing IP on chain and tokenizing IP 
immediately solve certain inefficiencies in the market that I can further describe another time. But we have this encoded into our design as well. And last, build responsibility for governance in nested tiers from the lowest level up to the interconnected whole. And that's exactly what we've done. Um, and as I described on the previous slide. Now, next slide. And so lastly, you know, another problem that often plagues DAOs is that they decentralize too rapidly. Overly rapid decentralization leads to unintelligent growth and vulnerability to capture by bad actors. And here we're innovating yet again, inspired by nature's model for sustainable, organic and decentralized growth we're employing a first of its kind Fibonacci launch for our cooperative membership tokens. Fibonacci sequences appear in everything from branching in trees to the arrangement of leaves on a stem to the fruit sprouts of a pineapple to the family tree of honeybees to financial markets to computer science and even to Sanskrit poetry. So why not to the sustainable growth of DAOs? Well, we will find out. Uh, our Fibonacci, and, and for those generally curious in the math of the sequence, it's simply the sum of the two preceding numbers. Three plus two equals five, five plus three equals eight, eight plus five equals 13, et cetera. Now, our Fibonacci launch begins with an initial cohort of 55 cooperative membership tokens, 55 being um, a Fibonacci number. These 55 cooperative members will then govern in the distribution of the next 34 membership tokens so that the cooperative grows to 89 members. Those 89 cooperative members will then govern in the distribution of the next 55 membership tokens so that the cooperative grows to 144 members and so on down the line. We're still, we can mint as many membership tokens as we want in my eye, we want north of 5 million so we can properly decentralize, but this will take time. Um, but one thing to note, um, as Prasanna and Ha will further describe, we're inviting everyone today to join the WowDow Discord and Telegram channels to get active. These channels, of course, already have well more than 55 members. Our intention is to invite, is to invite our most active and needed members from the broader sort of WowDow Discord and Telegram channels into the cooperative as quickly as we responsibly can. The upshot here is the more active the early cohort of DAO members are, the quicker we can expand our membership and the quicker we can expand a quality membership that is what we think our members are actually looking for to meaningfully participate. Thank you so much. I'm now happy to hand things over to Prasanna, who will walk us through our roadmap of next steps. Can you step in and cut it short? Go on to the next slide, please. Can, can we unmute? Yes. Thanks, uh, Chris. And uh, 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 we are happy to announce that, uh, you know, as uh, Chris and Thomas has mentioned, that. Uh, we're officially uh, doing a soft launch uh, as of uh, today. And uh, uh, Ha will walk you through what are all the different uh, membership uh, group that uh, we are planning to have them onboarded. From now till November, we are planning to invite all that uh, initial 55 members that will be onboarded uh, as part of uh, the multiple groups that we are talking about. And uh, in parallel to that, we are already working on uh, the technology behind it, whatever Chris has mentioned, uh, uh, everything will be driven completely end to end from a technology focused uh, one I, with uh, a back end uh, system in terms of uh, providing the end to end uh, IP management, token management, and uh, with the secure uh, interaction between uh, your uh, members, governing bodies, and so on and so forth. And Prasad we are planning, yeah. My yes, sincere no. apology, we were just notified uh, unexpectedly that we have a situation here and we have literally only five minutes for wrapping up the entire session. There's a sure. situation here on site it. that it's out of our control. I understand. So we are launching here and over to Ha and Thomas 
uh, for taking it forward. Yes. Yeah. Anything about that? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, thank you so much, President, for your insight to an overview of the roadmap. Um, so now it's time to take action. We welcome all of you, our judges, mentors, our contestants, and everyone attendees of this Worldwide AI and Web3 Summit to join as a part of the Wow DAO. And we will touch by very soon to, to send you more information about how to join as a contributor of the Wow of the Wow DAO. Yeah, thank you so much all of you for joining us in this uh, two-day incredible event. Uh, I'm afraid that we have to wrap up right here because- of, Maybe um, we show the next slide. That is an important slide that we maybe want to share. Here we go, the working groups. That's an important one. All right, we have two minutes We left. have four minutes. Let's maximize the four minutes. All right. Um, so the core team of the, the WOW DAO, uh, we have um, different working groups. The very first one is core members uh, who will play an important role in shaping the vision of the DAO. The second one is advisory board where we will uh, select and invite uh, AI and Web3 leaders to join us as advisors to support with uh, different strategies for the WOW DAO. The third one, if you are an expert in investment funding and compensation in Web3, we welcome you on board in this working group. The fourth one, tech and legal experts. Um, it will play an important role to support with building infrastructure and legal system for the whole DAO ecosystem. And last but not least, it's the marketing, community management, and growth group. We really want to welcome anyone who have experience in this field to support us to um, extend, expand our exposure in different countries. So yeah, thank you everyone. Um, we just want to extend our heartfelt gratitude to all of you to join us uh, for our incredible event. And um, I'm gonna give stage back to Thomas to say some of the last words in one minute left. <laughs> Thank you very much. So first of all, we love and we will work with entrepreneurs and startups. Uh, I would say we are all entrepreneurs ourselves. And having said that, this is a live session. This is real time. We are entrepreneurial spinets. We have to adjust as situations are being thrown at us. No problem at all. In final closing, I would say after the last two days, this has been an absolute valuable, informative, insightful and fun event. Uh, we will make sure that all the videos for the individual panels will be properly edited. We will put it on YouTube. We will put it on the proper channels and on our websites. And I can highly encourage everybody, if you want to uh, learn more about individual topics from the VCs to the remarkable woman in AI, to this amazing detailed explanation what the Wow DAO is all about, please watch the videos, put it on YouTube, put it on your social media, make it uh, as visible as you can so that as many people are aware for us to are building this particular amazing uh, organization, the Wow DAO. With that, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, a, a, a huge, huge thank you to all the speakers who came to the studio, who called in in the middle of the night from all over the world. And with that, we are closing our very first AI and Web3 Summit 2023. And we will all see you in 2024. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.